Hey guys, in today's Terra Firma Punk spawner tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to convert one of these airships into a double pigman spawner, like in my SMP series. Uh, these are a pretty good place to take over, to be honest, and they're not as hard as you would think, because these mobs, these pigmen, these steam pirates as they're renamed, um, are pretty tough, but they're passive unless you hit one of them. But that's the risk, because the first step in this is clearing all of this out. Um, these airships usually have two spawners, one in the back like here, and one underneath, another spawner there, and they're close enough together that you can actually get them both active at the same time. The problem with them is that these airships are usually quite high up in the air, and you've got to find a way of getting the mobs together, especially without buckets, unless you're all the way up to red steel. So I'm going to be showing you how to create a low-tech version of this spawner, which is still reasonably efficient. The very first thing you need to do is clear away all of the, the balloon and the ship itself until you're left with basically just those two spawners. Um, when you're working on that, I would probably recommend saving these balloon blocks because they're not that cheap to make and they'll be handy if you ever want to make an airship. And also hidden away inside the ship in a couple of locations, you will find, if I can find it, yeah, there you go, some end stone. It's worth saving those blocks as well because they're used for a quest later on. Once you have cleared away all the blocks from the airship, um, it's time to find the center of the farm. This is going to be the center point for the collection streams at the bottom as well. Uh, just build a little platform across. You need to use some kind of non-gravity block. It doesn't have to be the stone bricks. I've just done it this way so you can see visually um, how big the, the gap is there. Uh, and once you've figured out where that center block is, this was 19 spaces between them. It should be the same on pretty much every single airship. I just, just marked it. I write down the X and Y cord, uh, X and Z coordinates, and I'll go down from the sea level, and I'll actually pillar up from the, the sea level to build the, the actual collection area underneath. Um, you're also going to need to, and it's worth doing it now while you've got this scaffolding here, Put a couple of blocks on top of the spawners, and this is to stop, you got some on this side already, this is to stop mobs spawning on top of there and getting stuck and not actually falling down uh, to the collection area on the bottom there. If you are, and it is going to happen, while you're working on this, the mobs are going to be constantly spawning and dropping down. This is going to slow down now because there's mobs close to the spawners, but especially once you remove this scaffolding, these are going to be dropping down, and suddenly there's no more pigmen within the spawn radius of this spawner, and so it knows it's ready to spawn some more. It's going to keep doing that, and they're going to keep dropping down. And what you're going to find is there's going to be hundreds of hundreds of pigmen collecting it, um, underneath the, the spawn trap that you're building. So keep an eye on that. If you notice your game is starting to lag out, or if you're playing on a server, it's worth occasionally uh, going over 128 blocks away and then coming back again to make them all despawn. Okay, so this is your pillar up from the, the ocean floor, which should be directly centered underneath that center block you identified on that, um, let's see if we can get a better angle, on that platform you built up above. So this is directly beneath it. This is going to mark your center point. I've used dirt here because it's an easy to gain early material. If you happen to have enough sticks and lumber to make carpenter's blocks, they're actually way easier to use instead of dirt where I'm using it in this. They break really easily with your fists, so they're a good kind of filler block, but they're a little bit more expensive, so it's up to you what you want to use. Dirt is fine, um, but I used carpenter's blocks in my uh, Let's Play series. But yeah, from that block, you want to go two blocks below the surface, so when you're standing on this, your head should still be below the water. And you want to go out, let's see if I can count this, three, six, eight blocks from that center pillar, and you want to go up one block, and then it's another eight blocks outwards. And you want to do that on both sides, so this is the same pattern on this side, but I've built this one out um, outwards as well, and you need to do this on that side as well. And this is one, two, three, four, five, uh, ten, eleven blocks wide. So you've basically got the mob, the center of the mob spawner is going to be uh, on this, this row here. It means you've got four blocks of space out on either side, and then you're just going to be building like a containing wall around the outside edge of the platform, like this. And build this up, the two blocks on this slightly lower one. OK. 
Okay. And I'm going to build this up on the other side as well, and then I'll cut back in. Okay, so once you've built your wall around, you can actually double check and make sure you've got the right spacing here. The top platform, in fact, all of these platforms should be seven blocks long. So three, four, five, six, seven, drop. And this should be, if this is right here, the block underneath uh, the spawner, there should be four gap, four blocks gap to the edges, every single edge. Yeah, four. There's obviously more this way, but that's fine. So that means that anything that drops should land within the area where the water is going to be flowing. Uh, and it's, the water is going to go seven blocks. It actually flows eight, so it'll drop down one more. Three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, and that'll be far enough to push into this, this middle row here. Once you're happy that you've got all the dimensions correct, um, it's time to build this sort of central channel that's going to push them towards the ladder. So uh, you've got your bottom layer here. This is sort of the middle middle run where that dirt, um, like your central pillar is going to be, your central block is, is along this column here. So just fill this in. You want an extra layer underneath and then complete the ring here like this. And it's very important that you don't fill this block in. You need to leave this one as a source block. And then, in fact, at this point, you can basically remove this dirt pillar. You don't need it anymore. So let's get rid of this. Or, I mean, you don't even have to get rid of it. You can just leave it as long as it's out of the way of what you're building here. And we're going to build out until we get to the point underneath, which I think is right here, where that central block is. And then go down one block and then continue out another eight blocks. Three, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight. So the water's gonna flow to here, and then do one more. That's where your ladder's gonna go up. And then one more so you can build up from that point. So in total, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six blocks, including this back wall here. So it's a five block space. You've dropped down, and then you can leave it another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten blocks, and then you're going to start going up again. So you can mark that now. There's no harm in doing that. At least then you've got somewhere to stand if you start to get tired or you're suffocating, and then you're basically just building out this um, this column here, this little passageway that they're going to get pushed along. like so. Uh, probably going to have to come out a little bit on either side there, but either way, it doesn't matter. Okay, so you're building until you get to this wall. You can actually, oops, not there. Put that down. You only need this gap to be too high. It's only got to be high enough for the, the pigmen to get pushed through. Uh, and then continue this along. I guess I should be continuing with the pattern, just so you guys can count blocks. Seal it all in, like so, okay, and now's the fun part, because so we've got to fill all of this in. So the important things here, again, I recommend doing this with carpenter's blocks if you have them, but you can use dirt if you're doing this like super early in the game and you haven't got many resources. I mean, you're actually going to need a ton of solid blocks to be building this anyway, so I guess you're going to have to do more farming than you would have had to do for, I don't know, say the submarine spawner that uh, we had in a previous video. But whatever you choose to use doesn't matter. As long as you leave these two end columns without filling them in. If you do that by accident, it doesn't matter. Just break some of these blocks around the edges and the water should replenish itself. But otherwise, try to, try to leave these intact because you're, you're going to need them. And then you're basically just filling in absolutely everything with dirt or carpenter's blocks or whatever you want until you filled in all of this water. The only other important thing to remember is you must not fill in this block right here. So this is fine. In fact, you need to do it to fill it in. Just do not fill in that, that block we left in that little donut in the back there. Right, so I'm going to fill all these in now. And I'll be back with you guys. Uh, well, yeah, and then you basically just clear it out. So I'm going to do that off camera as well. And I'll be back with you guys once I've cleared out all the water. 
Okay, so the next step is to get your signs. You should have a bunch of these. You don't need a full 16, but you need enough to be able to put one. You can shift click onto the previous sign to place them like this, by the way, to completely cover this corridor right here. There you go, so that's going to be in this block. I could have just put that on that wall, but it makes no difference because this is not far enough for the water to stop on its own. It would flow down this this middle bit if we didn't block it off with signs like this, but these will still let the mobs pass through. Uh, you'll note I've left a piece of dirt here. That's just because if I take this out, the water's going to be flowing and it's going to make our lives a, a nightmare for this next part. So you remove that pretty much last. At the same time, remove all of this stuff here and let the water flow out. Uh, so yeah. Notice all of this is clear, completely clear water. It's going to be uh, the mobs are going to get pushed along by that one source block, pushing them all the way along to the end, uh, and then we basically just put ladders here and break this. And now we're going to start extending this pillar with ladders all the way up until we get to this point right here. I think we decided this was going to be the middle point vertically between those two spawners we're going to be basically building that up to this layer and then i'll show you how much taller to to make it to make the kind of killing drop for the mobs i'm just going to build this up now okay so this was that middle block of the the farm here the block we identified right at the beginning you can actually have all of this space to build in if you want to build something fancy all you need to do is you make sure you leave one two three four blocks gap around the outside of the spawner. I mean, if you're gonna only have it a four block gap, I would put a wall up here as so the mobs don't like drift over to the side and end up in whatever platform you're building. But all you need to leave minimum is four block space. You can leave more if you want, if you want to be safe, right? It's fine. Um, but I'm making the assumption here when I'm showing you guys that you want to make an XP farm. And if you want the mobs to go up to the top and drop down and be down to the minimum amount of health without actually dying, it's a 21 block drop. So I've built up that much further. Went up our 21 blocks here. Uh, let's break the side thing out. And that's where the ladder ends. They're going to climb up. They're going to get pushed over to the side. And then they're going to fall down this hole right here. So let's just build that back up again. And it's probably best practice to put like... Oops, fell too far there. That place? No, I don't know what happened there. Um, probably best to cover out the top because these mobs like to jump as well. We don't. Oh, there we go. That's what happened. We don't want them escaping. Oh, sorry, guys. It's getting late again. <laughs> um, now, normally this wouldn't be enough. The mobs would be collecting up here. They won't walk off this of their own free will unless you put like a trap door. But then I find sometimes they get stuck on the trap door. But the beauty of this mod pack is that the mobs have collisions. So as they push each other up this ladder and start to uh, collect up here, they actually push each other off of this cliff here. Um, and they'll end up coming down and falling on this block right here in front of us. Let's just make it day again ready to kill. So I just need to fill this in now to make sure there's like a tube then fall down and they can't escape. So I'll do that right now. Okay, so I've encased them the the back tube, the one where they go upwards. Uh, and now to try and make this front one. So they're going to be dropping down here. We want this space to be clear. In fact, we don't even need this block now. It's just so we can get this this uh, column started here. We're going to stand here and they're going to drop down to this part. And we can start hitting them with our sword or our weapon. Um, but from this point upwards, we just build it up to encase them. Again, no nasty surprises. Pigmen falling on top of you out of the sky. That's a, a terrible, terrible thing. Um, that is it. We're basically done now. So, just to make sure, I think I've had this on peaceful just so we didn't get harassed by mobs. If I hit that. Let's go down and remove the the dirt casings here. I mean, you can build this wall up if you're worried about them kind of escaping, but I'm still in two minds about whether it's actually necessary. And you'll save yourself a few blocks if you don't need it. But yeah, we break those. The water gets released, gets pushed towards the middle, and stopped by these signs. We'll do the same on this side. There we go. Break this dirt block. The water should push down here, all the way towards the ladder. So they're getting pushed into this ladder. And 
that should be it. So if we stand up here, anywhere on this platform, we're close enough to both spawners. They should be working. Oh, in fact, I guess you could remove these ones underneath as well. Make it slightly more efficient. Yep, there we go. Some just spawned and dropped down. They will get pushed into the middle. Let's, let's follow them. In they go. <laughs> Stop jumping. It doesn't matter if they take a while to get through this system, by the way, because as soon as they've cleared those spawners, they're clear to the spawners are free to spawn the next batch of mobs. But yeah, they get pushed in. They like to climb these ladders. Hopefully you can see this. Ah, there we go, that's better. They're just pushing themselves up this ladder. No in no help from me, no assistance from me. <laughs> Up to the top. A couple of them got stuck, but they pushed the other ones off as they went. Oop, that's bad. Uh, but the ones that got pushed off should be... Oh, missed a block, apparently. Yeah, there you go. With basically one hit with a decent sword, with like a bronze sword or something like that, that should finish them off. It's kind of hard to, them, to get the mobs down to a one-punch kill. I haven't figured out a way of doing that yet. Um, but yeah, this is it. They build up pretty quickly, actually. Oh, so we've been down the bottom. When you're down the bottom, nothing will spawn when you're up here. Oh, there's the next batch. There you go. So it takes a minute to get going, but then it starts working at maximum efficiency. You get a fairly steady stream of mobs coming down. Uh, you'll notice that they're jumping like this. I was having an issue with this in my single player. Um, I found... The best solution to it is to log off and log back in again, um, and then it resets their jumping. Um, and as long as you're close to them when you do it, the mob shouldn't despawn when you log out and in. Uh, you might have trouble with that on a server, unless you're the only one on. As long as you're the only person on when you log out and back in again, they should still be there. But if someone else was around, uh, and they're more than 128 blocks away, I believe, these things will despawn as soon as you log off. Um, if you leave it long enough, they settle down anyway. And, like, I left this for uh, maybe half an hour, 45 minutes. And when I came back, I had about 300 or so of these things collected. And so I just started hacking away at them. <laughs> Completely wore out my, my bronze sword, but I gained... Well, I was already at level 30, and I got up to about level 60 or so, I think it was. Uh, in terms of loot, you get reward backs, and you also get... Rotten Flesh, you'll get some of the Flax Beard stuff, so an absolute ton of Brass Pistons, which are useful. Uh, they, they can basically smelt down straight into Brass, so that's free Brass. You will get um, Steam Shovels, where are they? Steam Shovels and Steam Drills, although the jury is out about whether these are actually useful or not. I haven't actually tested them properly myself yet. You will also get gold ingots, no not this, the actual gold ingots and gold nuggets, so they're pretty good for resources. What I haven't seen from them yet is quarter hearts, uh, but I think you can get those from the reward bags anyway, so if you kill enough of them you should still be able to farm lives with this, with this kind of farm. So that is it, I hope you found that useful. Um, Give me some feedback if, if you have any thoughts about how to make it better or if you thought it was terrible or whatever. This is a brand new series for me and I, I'm still trying to get the hang of the best way of presenting things. I'm hoping it was a little bit clearer this time than in the last tutorial video. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys and I will see you in the next episode. Bye bye